Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salam wa rahmatullah <coughs> Can building energy and making a connection help us in solving our matters with people who aren't present among us? Like they're in a different country harming us with their tongues. Yeah, the, this process of energy and this process of marifa and all our teachings you have to put all together. This process of, of good character that Allah has to smash you because you're a very beautiful vase. We said big fish, small pond, now we'll give you another example, another what's it called, uh, alley, alley? Allegory? Example? What's another word for example? Allegory? No, not allegory. Analogy? Analogy? Yeah. So big fish, small pond, if that didn't work, let's try now beautiful vase. That everybody is a very beautiful vase, nicely painted, they adorn themselves with everything and then all their beautiful character they think they have. Tariqa and the reality that Allah want is that you, you, you're going to come with a little hammer and He cracks it. And then this vase begins to shatter because this vase that we've built on who we think we are is all based on the nafs. That what your mama told you how great you were, how beautiful you were, how great and successful you would be, that's not true. That's just your mom loves you very much, <laughs> right? But you build that and you go out to the world and say, I'm the best, I'm the most beautiful, I'm the greatest, I'm most successful. But this become ananiya, I, I, I'm so much, I'm Pharaoh. And what Allah want is like, you created special, yes, let me gush. And then a test comes in our life, another test comes. And Allah wants to shatter that. You're not shattered but the vase becomes shattered because who you are is the soul inside not the outside, that's not you. That's just the face you've given to the world. That's just a character and a name that you've given to the world of who you are and what your status is and how people should respect you, talk good about you, talk high about you. Allah doesn't care for that. Allah actually has the system rigged in a different way, let them talk bad about you. Because every time they say something bad Allah sends from your sins and gives to them. They're, they're like you're packing bags upon them. They give you one bad word on here and there through relatives, Allah took sins off of you and put it on to that person. So alhamdulillah this is a relief from Allah and at the same time it becomes a crack on your vase. I'm shattering your image, I'm shattering you. When you become content with that and you took a path of humility, oh many people say bad things about us everywhere and has, have been for 25 years but we're a train that keeps moving. If you want to ride, hop on board. If you don't, no problem, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Because the train has to keep moving, keep moving. If it wanted to stop and cry for every time somebody wanted to say something, wanted to attack something, wanted to cause a difficulty, that would be shaitan blocking the whole path. So as the shaykh's train is moving, who comes ahlan wa salan, who left salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam, khudafis, <laughs> it doesn't matter for the shaykh. It just matters that his train keeps moving and maybe that person will come back on and the next three stations down the road because in many areas it's the only ride available towards the heavens. So this is an importance of they live their life like that so the students should be emulating that understanding. You don't have to chase anything, you don't have to worry about anything. If there are people talking bad about you it's a relief from Allah somebody carrying your bags. Let them talk and talk and Allah will just send more of your burdens upon them and that's why it's very dangerous to talk bad about a shaykh because he carries the burdens of many. It's like having a suitcases of thousands of pounds being thrown onto your life and that's why it can devastate somebody. 
If you go back and look at the people who did and said very bad things, their whole lives can become devastated from those types of characteristics because the burdens they carry are very big. So it's not carrying the burden of one small person, you may be involved now in the burdens that are very big that the shaykhs carry from the burdens of all their students. So that's why the, the hikmah and the wisdom of this whole system Allah has set up. But everything is based on the good character so that you get the reward within the grave and that Allah give us and that was the whole talk of the energy. We're here to achieve the energy and this qudra and power and that's all that's important for us. And if Allah want to do all the testing then the testing is whatever Allah wants, how could anyone stop it inshaAllah. <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa What does tariqah say about taking care of the physical body because you've always talked about the soul, anything that we should do to do for our body? Walaykum As Salaam wa You have to take care of your physical body is a trust from Allah that it's under a gift. Allah has given the body as a gift to us, it's our responsibility to take care of the body. So that this is a vehicle in which to give us the support to do our da'wah, to do our ibadah, to do our worshipness for if we should be an oppressor to the body then you can't even worship Allah You know you get… you oppress the body then you get arthritis. If you get arthritis you cry that you can't even make sujood because it's so difficult, so it affects even your ibadah and your worshipness with Allah So always our shaykhs taught us, always pray for good health, good health. Ilayanta baqsud uridat madlubna amma yujeebun mutarida wa yushifusu That who can my soul call out to except through you Ya Rabbi but grant me good health, grant me good health so that I can do my worshipness and do my da'wah. And that when my time is up then it's time for me to go but uh, to not oppress the body and to be safeguarding and preserving the body. In these days more important because of the amount of oppression and difficulty coming upon the earth than to keep oneself healthy with your vitamins, with your activity, with your exercise, with everything so that you, you govern yourself appropriately, inshaAllah. As Alaikum beloved Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, your tongue positioning in meditation, does it have anything to do with being silent when tested? Please help me understand. Hmm. Your tongue position in meditation, has it any importance to being silent when, when being tested? Ya yeah, inshaAllah if you're, if you're understanding the reality of your, your meditation that when you go into a locked state, when you meditate and you're locked or in the khatam and the zikr, all of these practices that you do, you should be done in your salah, in your, in your zikr, every action that you're doing of worshipness has to be in a state of tafakkur that I'm nothing I'm asking for their support and their dress to dress me, their lights to dress me. And as soon as you breathe and you connect your finger you feel their energy and then you seal your energy and lock with the tongue going to the palate of the roof and locking the body. As soon as the palate of the mouth feels the tongue it's a, like a sealing of energy in which that servant is sealing themselves for their energy and the movement of their energy. Same thing if somebody testing and you're able to catch yourself to bring for your madad, ask for madad, ask for support, seal yourself and then remain silent as somebody's saying or doing. The more that you can use those it's like firefighting. You know they train you, train you, train you, not just run into a fire but all the training have you ever seen firefighter training, they even sleep with their shoe in their pants all rolled up so that from sleep they jump into their suit to go out to the fire. Means that in life you have to condition yourself with your shoes and pants to be all in one place. 
means that your meditation practices, you don't try to gather them when something difficulty coming, oh what was I supposed to do, what was I supposed to do now? Oh my god I was screaming, let me go wash, let me go wash, let me go, oh no, no, no what am I supposed to So it was like a fireman, all your life you're always in that system. Then you know when you're going out there's a fire, so I'm going to make sure I have wudu, make sure I have my tasbih, make sure I have my ring, make sure I'm understanding. I'm going to certain places, I know which relatives I'm going to be tested with because relatives have the biggest buttons, not the strangers. Nobody should be crazy with somebody from a store, that, that, that's way lower level. But the relatives Allah gives them big buttons, people whom are near and dear to you, they have buttons that they can push, they go deep into the person for reactions. Well you should go there with wudu, you should have your ring, you should you know be pre prepared for what shaitan is about to do to you. And then you go with all your practices and somebody start to say something and you just seal yourself and put your tasbih in your hand, remind yourself of who you are and what your practices are and try to survive it with little or no talking and reaction and good character and you fail two times, three times, four times until one time you actually begin to pass. And because you, you know that shaitan is sitting there to come after you. At some point you're going to say, hey I'm not going to let shaitan make it ruin everything for me over and over and over again. So, oh no this subject is, is really I have to fight about it. No. Because Allah doesn't care about any subject, He just cares that, how come you're not passing? You know something is not right with your faculties then that's a different, you have to take medicine, that's a different faculty door. But if everything is operating with you, why you're not passing this? Each, oh no this is a serious issue, this always gets me angry, but that, that's the one that goes very deep, that's the one that Allah keeps pushing that button for some reason. Oh. They scream because that's the one that invokes all your emotions, that's the one they won't resolve until you're able to sit there and keep your wudu, have your tasbih in your hand and begin to learn how to lock yourself and seal yourself so that your energy is coming and defending you, inshaAllah. Mm, as Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Mm. Uh, how I'm connect because I don't feel anything that makes me cry. Does it mean I'm not connected? Please guide me. <laughs> it's on that. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I don't know how somebody can think they, they have nothing to cry about. So that, that, that in itself will make a du'a that Allah send you something to cry about. That if you can't find in your life a sadness and nothing to be sad about, nothing to cry about, nothing about yourself, nothing about your children, nothing about your family, your condition of your parents. If you can't find anything relative then start to look at the world, say, Ya Rabbi I can't take all this sadness everywhere that you're eating and there's somebody starving. You're we're watching TV and somebody is buried under the rubble of a building that just been exploded and they can't find them, they can't eat from them. So th there has to open empathy and compassion within the heart of the servant, you know, how you cannot find something to cry about. Everyone should look at their children and then cry a lot because in a couple of years he's not going to be doing what you said to do. They grow out of everything and the devil begins to attack them and influence them and come this way, come that way and the path of everyone's life is then taking and uh, at that time everyone has their own path of whatever Allah wrote for them. Then you cry that their path won't be difficult, won't be extreme and that Allah keep them to the love of Sayyidina Muhammad There's so many things to cry about that it's just unimaginable. Look at then people who have been tortured. And they show pictures of their torturing, you say, how, how they've been tortured like that, and tomorrow they'll come to torture me one day. Why they're, 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 they're worse than me or better than me? Allah loves this creation, loves these servants. So that every time there's something sad and I remember we went to South America on a tour and they were talking about people were so poor that they left their children out and dogs were coming and taking them. The dog would come and take the child and grab him by the feet to take him to the bushes to eat him. 
with no parent around, nobody caring anything. It was the most horrific things that you could hear about. That you know these case workers were, were going where animals were, were eating people. So there's so much, so much horrific events happening upon this earth, it's impossible to think that you know people can't find something to cry about. That means then the heart is, is too, too hard and has to be softened. So lots of salawats, lots of looking at difficulty, turn on the news and see oppression and difficulty everywhere and inshaAllah Allah open the, the heart of the servants to be more empathetic, softer and compassionate to themselves, to their family and to everything around inshaAllah. And Prophet described, if you knew what I knew you would cry more than you laugh. Because of what Prophet is seeing of immense all knowledges that are passing through the reality of Prophet So it was a isharat for everyone to, to be compassionate and cry more than we laugh inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah I have a non-Muslim friend who is struggling, though he doesn't believe he asks for goodness from me. How does one be a good friend to those who is not Muslim nor believing but you know Allah will open or help them? Yes, yeah, somebody's belief is not up to us and has nothing to do with us, we're, we're good to whomever we deal with. We don't have to categorize somebody as Muslim or not Muslim. So when we go out with a friend, you just do good deeds for the friend, good actions, give advice, talk on a regular basis and a normal basis of do this, do that, do that. And normally, and this is how the tariqah spreads, is that people hear the good word and they see the good deed. They see that the character is good, it's soft, it's talking, advising and then everybody becomes like an advisor for somebody. People come to give counselling, understanding your opinion and it's always a very gentle reminder. It's never turn around and say, okay give me your shahada and I'll go do your salah right now and <laughs> it's not that type of da'wah. The da'wah is always of a subtle nature in which your good deeds and your good actions make you to be like a spotlight for people. People who, hey I want to get some understanding, I want to get some coordinates and everything is always with a soft tongue and a soft example. So that people will be following that understanding, that guidance and coming at their own pace. We said this is the specialty of tariqahs. So we don't go around telling people, make your salah, make your salah, hello how are you, yes make your salah tomorrow. No, but we talk and they sit with us and they say, say you guys uh, know about like energy? Say, yeah, as a matter of fact I can teach you about energy, do like this, do like this, do like this and ground your negative energy and put your head onto the ground. No, they do that right away. There was no mention of praying or nothing. So everything in da'wah is always very s with wisdom and slow because we're all in the western world teaching this. And they begin to put their head onto ground to make sujood. Then they ask for more about energy and you say, okay you should wash all the negative energy. When you go to the mall, come back, wash negative energy. So that's all right, that sounds a great idea. When you come back from work, wash all your negative energy, okay. Now they're all making wudu. So you talk to people and that was the hadith of Prophet teach everyone at their level, lower your wings to reach to everybody. So the hikmah is to talk to people at their level and their understanding and before you know it, they're doing everything and then later they'll find what these are called in, in Arabic language, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, When we come to know that external negative energy is coming near us, what should we do? External negative energy coming near us, what should we do? Don't worry about anything. That's why all those talks before, just build your energy, build your connection, build your madad and uh, 360 degrees around you, above you and below you is negative energy. Did you think you were in a place where there was no negative energy? So where's shaitan right now? He's in front of you, he's to the right of you to the left of you, behind you, above you and below you. Didn't he say that in Qur'an? Yes? Hajj Shahzad? You know better, sir. 
<laughs> of course Allah said, shaitan said, I'm going to attack your servants. I'm going to attack in front of them, behind them, to the right of them, to the left of them, above them and below them. Yes, so his guarantee is that I'm surrounding them. And Allah says, go after them except not my mukhlas. So the mukhlas they reach to protection in which Allah distances them and they're mahfuz. Not masoom, mahfuz that they're guarded, Allah put around them guards to go after those shaitans. But the Qur'an is promising you from six directions shaitan is around you. So where are you without any negative energy? So why do you care about that? Just focus on the good energy that make your muraqabah, make your conditions, make your salawats so that Prophet's Muhammadan light, beatific lights are all around the servant. That's all that we have to worry about is build it, build it, build it, make the connection. No doubt shaitan is everywhere but now are you protected with these lights to defend yourself? against this shayateen and that's what's important inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah uh, What are the etiquettes of wearing the ring like the washroom or while sleeping? Yeah the, the, the ring again like anything holy uh, is to be, it has a light and has an immense blessing. So we don't take those into the washroom, the only thing that you're allowed to take into your washroom is your kufi that's under this turban and that's why we don't wrap the turban on the head. Baluwi, they wrap their turban on their head. So, oh where's my hat? Your kufi, this has to remain on your head in the washroom. By means of that is a protection on your head and a protection to your energy. And your taweez under your shirt, your taweez within yourself when you enter into the facility for washing because it's the house of shaitan and he's going to try to attack. So Allah is allowing these as a protection for the believer. But when you have a sunnah ring then everything has to come off. You don't go with asa, you don't go with the turban, this is the, is holy, the turban is something holy. So these don't go into the bathroom facility, the ring doesn't go into the bathroom, the asa doesn't go into the bathroom into there, the jubba if you're wearing a jubba that doesn't go into the bathroom because these are all dressings of light and, and holiness. Your tasbih goes into the pocket and never sort of into the bathroom with a tasbih and never take food and sustenance into the bathroom as shaitan will dress that food and sustenance and become something cursed and then that person put into their body. If it's a facility just for the bathroom, some facilities are very open, the sink is somewhere else and the, the wash cabinet is somewhere else, that's something different. But when they open a door into the wash cabinet it's not a food and drinking festival. Western world now that's like their best part of their home. The wash cabinet is there with a television, a snack bar, food and chips and drink and they never want to leave that throne. For them it's like arsh, they're sitting there, they're going to be guiding the whole world from that seat. But that's not, not the reality that the heavenly kingdom has taught for insan is that's the, the throne of shaitan, leave that, don't, don't bother yourself with that, that reality, that garbage. So alhamdulillah Allah gave for us these weapons, these heavenly spiritual lights that to defend ourselves against these devils inshaAllah. To demonstrate, that's good. Alhamdulillah. Illa shayf al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ashabi kiram wa lana shaykhina fi tariqatina shpandiya turnu aliyya wa sayiru sadatina wa siddiqina al-Fatiha.